Isaiah McKenzie is back deep for the Bills. Fielded just inside the 20. A terrific return. 30 yards all in all. And the Bills will take over the football with a first and 10. So good starting field position for him here as they come up first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 49. Allen's throw caught by Sanders. A gain of six there on first. To throw again on second down. Allen, pressure coming from the Vikings, and they get there and bring him down. The defensive end, Daniil Hunter, drops him. He was still looking through his progressions and going through his receiver options, and while he was doing that, the defense got to him quickly in the pocket. And it was a great example of zone coverage. Well executed, well coordinated. All the receivers were covered, and he couldn't evade the rush back in the pocket. Diggs, of course, playing against his former mates here. Second season now with Buffalo. And we remember Diggs spent five seasons with the Vikings, was a two-time thousand-yard receiver for them. But his big breakthrough was last year's first year in Buffalo, led the league in both receptions and receiving yards. He was sensational. Making the tackle there, the former giant Dalvin Tomlinson. Yeah, I don't know if it's exactly a win-win, but if you're on offense, you'll take that kind of a run. All right. It was kind of stacked up. Found a little bit of yardage, and frankly, they're pretty close to staying on schedule on offense. The playbook is still open for the coordinator. He's got the hookup with Diggs. And all the way home for the Bills touchdown. Stephon Diggs, 35 yards. And the Bills have taken the early lead. Both sides of the football in sync early. You force the three and out, and then you take it down, score points. You know what that tells me? They sold their game plan really well. Head coach said, listen, we're just going to stop them on three and out. We're going to take the ball downfield and score. But he also told them how it was going to happen. They're going to run this. We're going to stop it. Then we're going to take the ball. They won't be able to keep up with us. And they got it done. scrimmage and they say he stepped over well when you see him in that position you think he's become a runner as a DB you start to react towards the line of scrimmage they can often throw it over your head takes it at the seventh oh a good return up past the 30 and all in all a pretty solid return nearly got it to the 35 they'll mark him down officially at the 34 and the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game and they'll certainly be trying to do better than that first drive where they went three and out. And sometimes the first drive is just simply to settle nerves. You know what it's like at the start of a game with the emotion. Guy's a little I bit don't, jumpy. But you do. Oh, you, you understand the same way. It's just like <laughs> us calling one, right? Making sure we ease into the game, let it come to us. Well, you went and three and out. And now they have that opportunity. <laughs> uh, no, you didn't go three and out. I went three and out on that first drive. I'll try to do better here. <laughs> A first down throw for Cousins. Eluding the pressure right. Oh, what a catch there by Thielen. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped. Inside the 40. Boy, that completion comes with a high degree of difficulty, especially on the catch. Had to look that one in one-handed able to do so and ends up picking up a first down as well so first and 10 now in buffalo territory at the 38 Cousins gives way to Cook. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. Two yards the loss, second and 12. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. 
On second and 12, Cousins. That's complete to Justin Jefferson. And he's got a first down as a tackle made at the Bills 14. Handoff comes to Cook. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and 10. A give. This is Cook. They'll get only three there, so it leaves them with a third and seven ahead. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense, and guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time, but you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Third down, Cousins. Yeah, quick throw here, that's complete. Touchdown! Tyler Conklin, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Vikings have tied it. They can grab the lead with a PAT. Extra point right down the middle. And they take the lead here at 7-6. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. From his end zone, Isaiah McKenzie. And he's going to be taken down inside the 10 at about the 8-yard line. Anytime you feel the kickoff inside your own end zone, you've got to be decisive about whether you're bringing it out or not. Sometimes that indecision can really cost you. That may have been what happened on that play. First down, they'll start out with Singletary. And he's going to take this up past the 10 to about the 11. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now Allen. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Nice play there to force the incompletion. And to me, one thing's for sure. When you're the underdogs and you're playing on the road, you absolutely have to get takeaways. You've got to get the ball from them. Yeah, win that turnover battle, going to be key. They didn't get one there, but you get the feeling they keep making plays like that. They might just get a few. Yeah, once you get one, defensive teams think they come in bunches. Allen hit. He lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And some room to work. just getting a fumble recovery. Everyone's into taking it the other way and trying to create points themselves, aren't they? Well, they are, and now a terrific opportunity inside the five. The defense gets in the ball via the turnover. Now can this offense cash in? First and goal. Cousins now after the fumble recovery. And it's caught in the end zone for the Viking touchdown by Justin Jefferson. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Now, there was no going through the progressions on that touchdown pass. Yeah, nor was it necessary. His receiver won that route early, presented himself. No reason to wait. Go ahead and put it on him and score a touchdown. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead is up to eight. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. McKenzie now from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much, as he's marked down officially at the 21. Buffalo set to get the football back here. And they had the fumble last time that led to a touchdown. 
That's a no-no. We'll see what they do here this go-around. <laughs> a big no-no. Put that in capital letters. Turning it over, the other team takes it down and scores. That can be a deflator for a football team. Now it's up to the offense to get back out on the field and pick things up. Now they're out there. We'll see if they can pick those things back up. Here's Allen on first and ten. Pass the 20. And all the way home for a Bills touchdown. Stephon Diggs with his second touchdown in this opening quarter. And the Bills are back within a couple of the lead. Still first quarter, two receiving touchdowns for him. How are they going to slow him down? I think they're thinking about altering their game plan. Whatever they came in with, now maybe you switch a better cover guy to him. Or you make sure you have more people in his general area, wherever he lines up, to at least try and discourage them from throwing the ball to him. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And that is incomplete. Uh, let me go ahead and show my age a little bit. I liked it when they would fake it from the three-yard line, right? When they'd line up, go ahead, and, oh, there's a fake, and oh, he's going to get two. That's great. But from the 15, the risk-reward, it's just not there. It's so risky to get 15 yards on a fake. Well, you see the result right there. Yeah, I know these young whippersnappers are trying to do different things in this game, but let's go back to old reliable. Kick the ball through the post. Get off my lawn. That's darn right. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Throwing on second and eight. Cousins and a dangerous throw there as that's knocked down and incomplete. An entertaining start to this one. More to come on EA Sports. So the failure to connect on second down that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Play action now. Cousins. Open man here is Conklin. And he will have a Vikings first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'll give them credit for a good read right there because they read the man coverage on the right side and sent the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. And he was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice game. First down, here's the run with Cook. And able to get a couple as he's across the 40 to the 41. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. Oh, he'll want that one back. Incomplete. He doesn't drop too many in that department. Third down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. to throw Cousins and that is incomplete that could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track they've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half after that possession now they know that they can compete with this offense here's Jordan Berry now as he'll kick it away for the second time And he can't field it cleanly. It's loose. And he's going to score. It's a Viking touchdown. A great play there. Taking it in. And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. Joseph on for the extra point. And that makes 
makes it a nine-point game. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. And you can bet they're preaching two hands on the ball here as the kick's away following that fumble return. And this taken in at the goal line. Buffalo offense ready to go for their next drive. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you score points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll run on first down with Singletary. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. So they fake the handoff. Now Allen. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. It looks like a 12-yard loss there on the first down sack. Well, here's where having mobility sometimes can work against you as a quarterback. He thinks he can retreat and outrun the pressure. But that time, they zeroed in on him and took him down for a big loss, partner. A really big loss. And meanwhile, Allen's throw taken in by Diggs. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 33. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. But that was an interesting look there because as soon as he got outside the pocket, I thought he was going to take off and run for yardage. But what often happens now with these quarterbacks who can move, defenses want to try and keep bodies in front of them. And I think that discouraged him from taking off and made him try a pass downfield that fell incomplete. And a tough ask here. They're going to go for it on fourth down and nine. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's McKenzie. Touchdown, Bills. Isaiah McKenzie, 33 yards. And the Bills' decision to go for it pays off with six points. And now Sean McDermott's made the call. They'll go for two. Allen will try to throw for it. And the Bills are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. So they're able to throw it in for the two-point conversion. Sometimes that can be a risky play, but they got it. Yeah, you always have to be careful here because if you do get an intercepted, it's returned by the defense. That's two points for them, but he identified an open target and put it right on him. Take it in at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28. The Vikings head out to take over once again. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> Watch that leverage on this drive. Speed is the name of the game when it comes to RPOs, and sometimes you can be a little too quick, thus inaccurate, incomplete. Play fake. Cousins flush to his right. And he gets this up to the 34 out of bounds there. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. On third down. Cook. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. It's a four-yard pickup, and that's going to make it fourth down. Here's Jordan Berry now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And a 
that's a fake. And this thing is blown up defensively. They will not get a throw off on the trick play, and that'll go down as a sack. I know without even asking, without even looking in your direction that you are not a fan of that call. Oh, I wish you would look, Brandon, because I was actually thinking this would be the perfect time for a fake. Right, right. Yeah, you're right. I, I, this doesn't make any sense to me at all. This deep in your own territory, look, I'm all for being unconventional. That part's cool, and I get it. But this deep, I just don't think it's the right time to make that call. And he'll get this down to about the 30, 31-yard line. The Bills on third down, just one for three thus far. This time it's third and three. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. They'll flip this quickly out to Beasley. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. Options galore here, second and a few inches. Allen now looks to throw. This is caught. Touchdown. Dawson Knox, a touchdown grab from Josh Allen. And the Bills have retaken the lead. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really... And they fake it. They pitch to the tight end. And this fake extra point attempt failed big time. Not only did they not get it, they went backwards. Okay, they went for the fake off of the, the extra point attempt. It's a long way to go, and they didn't get there. Didn't get it completed successfully. Did someone dare them to do that? Did, did, did someone double dog dare them? I was going to ask, well, maybe they, they saw something on film. Did you see something on film that goes to try something from the 15 on a PAT? I the, don't know. The only thing they needed to see on film there was a snap, a hole, and someone kicking the ball through the post. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10 at the 40. Working out of the gun, Cousins. And they take him down. The Bills get to him. The Vikings going to signal for their first of their timeouts. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Well behind the sticks here with a second and 18. Another try after the first down sack. Cousins. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. Well, that's a drive killer right there. Not a really confident throw either. This one was kind of up for grabs, and it's going to come down the hands of the wrong team. Flushed out right. Thrown across his body, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 25, and he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. I know it appeared he was saying, hey, give me the football, I'm open, but I don't know if that's a pass that he should have thrown there. Well, I don't think we've ever met a wide receiver that doesn't think he is open or is about to be open. <laughs> True. So when you throw your hand up in the air and tell your quarterback, hey, I'm available, he's trusting that you are. In this case, he was not, and it turned into disaster for them. shake off the interception he'll look to throw forced out to his and he will not make it back to the line of scrimmage as he's going to be taken down jerry hughes able to run him down for a loss of a yard like the footwork back there i thought he did a pretty good job of evading that first wave of players tried to buy a little extra time out of the pocket but in the end oh that was a tough one yeah winds up getting buried for the loss that's into a crowd and intercepted Picked off by Jordan Poyer. And the Bills are going to take over a couple of yards shy of midfield. So that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. 
And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 45-yard line. It was Daniil Hunter to make the play in the backfield. And that's what I'd like to see out of this defense, a little fire, a little toughness. It hasn't been the best first half for them, but they did do a nice job there forcing a loss on that play. Oh, that's just not fair, and now room to run. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. shot before half for Allen buying time to his left and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete so we've reached halftime in a wild first half we'll take a minute to catch our All right, hang on we'll jump over halftime Bills with the lead and they'll get the football first as the second half is underway McKenzie now from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there at 40 yards. The Bills come to the line to start their next drive. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going. Allen hit. He lost the football. And the Vikings pick up the football. And some space here. And they're going to bring this one back. It's a fumble return. A scoop and score for the Vikings. So a big turn of events there. This defense makes the play. They return it for the score, and now they have the lead. So much for ball security for the offense. Playing with the lead in the second half. They give the ball up, and all of a sudden they're behind. Big time fumble. Cousins will try and throw. And he's going to go down. Can't get rid of it. So a sack on the two-point try. And in the third quarter here, they were trying to push that to a three-point game, but instead it'll stay at one. And I'm a big proponent of not chasing points or going for two too early. But in this case, I understand why. You know, if you kick an extra point, you're just up two, yeah. right? So a field goal still puts the other team ahead. So you go for two here and protect the field goal lead. They didn't get it done, though. And they'll get him down right around the 25, actually the 26 officially, so a net gain of one there. Buffalo offense back out ready to go. And they weren't on the sidelines for long, but I'll tell you what, I'm glad you and I weren't down there. We could hear them, <laughs> the coaches from all the way up here. They were, and he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. On the handoff, it's Singletary. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. And hey, we often talk about defensive ends setting the edge, sometimes even the outside linebackers. But how about here? This is a cornerback essentially setting the edge and finishing off that play for a loss. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Call it a loss of two there on the play. And it'll be fourth down. I believe I could see what they were trying to do there, but unfortunately, the back ran out of room. Too close to the sideline. And for defenders, we're often taught, 11 on the field, those sidelines can become the 12th defender. It worked to the defense's advantage on that play. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. And now out comes Minnesota. Cousins and the Vikings with a first and 10, just shy of midfield at the 48. He'll start by handing it off to Dalvin Cook and taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. Running lanes were at a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Cousins now to throw on first down. Escaping the pressure right. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. Me, me. 
A tenth carry in the game for Cole. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. And that's why Dalvin Cook is the Minnesota Vikings feature back. You put the ball in his hands, good things happen. Second in the NFL last year in rushing with 1,557 yards. And that's now back-to-back 1,000-yard seasons with 30 combined total touchdowns. What a player is Dalvin Cook. They'll try to throw now. Cousins dancing to his left. And the third interception thrown by Cousins. Picked off at the 11. And he is going to get this one back to the 20-yard line. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because oh, here we are in December. Of giving. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. Singletary to get the drive started. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Daniil Hunter able to disrupt yet another pass play. That is his third sack of the afternoon. They tried to go with a little play action there, but nobody on the defensive side bit. Yeah, they adjusted in time and in a big way and ultimately got the sack on offense. Sometimes you're running play action just to set up a certain blocking technique. In this case, none of it works. He's got his target. It's the tight end, Knox. And that's not nearly going to be enough. Stopped at the 22, and he needed plenty more. Allen going to go on fourth down. Being chased out left. And now look at this. Big gain, but a fumble. And this one's going to go out of bounds. So no recovery, but on fourth down, a change of possession anyway. 27 yards, a big play there on fourth. On first down, Singletary. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. Now on second and 13. Allen, he's going to go deep for Beasley. And that ball incomplete. He couldn't work free from his defender, and now it's third down. I remember a coach told me a long time ago the difference between playing corner and safety in the NFL corner is like the Autobahn. Everybody just flying by, and these corners have been really busy in this game, although they got it done on the last play. On the last play, yes, but there have been some good numbers put up against them offensively. <laughs> on third and long, it's Allen. He completes it to the tight end, Knox. Touchdown, Bills! Dawson Knox, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bills have once again taken the lead. I know we often laugh, and sometimes we even exalt the guys who are great trash talkers and give us some really funny lines. But the bottom line is absolute production on the field. His second touchdown of the game, and they... And this is going to be intercepted. Able to get there and pick it. And the Bills are going to have the football at their own one-yard line. Well, as most teams do in their two-point attempt, they pass the ball. Instead, it gets intercepted. And remember, if you pick it off, you got a chance to take it all the way back at two points yourself, right? Yeah, not the case there, but that's why you got to be really careful with those throws, especially to the outside. Nuwangu now from his end zone. Oh, a dangerous return man showing it here. Kenne Nuwangu. And he'll bring it back all the way. Touchdown, Minnesota. It's been a back and forth game, a lot of points on the board, and that return right there kind of indicative of how this thing's gone. Yeah, you've seen both teams go at it, and as you just pointed out, both of them have found the end zone. But just like in boxing, you know the blow that hurts the most? The one you didn't see coming, and that often is the case when it comes in special teams. And now they'll empty the backfield here as they elect to go for two. They'll try and throw for it. 
And he'll get into the end zone to push the lead up to a field goal. So they make the decision. They want a three-point lead versus a two-point lead, and they got it. Yeah, at this stage of the game, it seems like the exact right thing to do. Put a little pressure on your defense, but the biggest thing now is you're making the other team chase you. McKenzie now from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Here's the Buffalo offense now as they get set to take over here. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went, no adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play, so now third down coming up. To the air, Allen eluding the pressure right. And this is going to be incomplete. I know he was trying to get the completion downfield, but the way this game has gone, with a few of the runs he's made along the way, he should have kept the ball and taken it with his feet downfield. That's the big play that shreds a defense. Instead, he thought to himself, I'm a quarterback. I've got to throw it. He bailed out the defense with that incompletion. Allen will look to throw for it on fourth. He's going to have his running back. It's complete. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. First down, and they're going to throw with Allen. And now another turnover as this one's intercepted. Picked up by Harrison Smith. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So this defense doubling its pleasure there. Remember, they had the fumble return for a score earlier in the game, and now this time an interception return for another score. The extra point splits the uprights, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. McKenzie now from his end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Here comes Josh Allen and the Bills offense back onto the field. He's hoping to channel his first half play. They had the lead at halftime, was playing well. Flip the script here in the third quarter a little bit. I think he misses the Pee Wee days, you know, the, when you just got the orange slice yeah. at halftime, right? And remember, there weren't any real adjustments then, right? You weren't looking at some tape, right? You weren't looking at stuff off of the, the surface tablets. He just went back out and played. Right now, maybe the adjustments have caught up to him. Well, we'll see. Maybe he just needs a couple orange slices here for this drive. On first down, Allen. The Vikings after him, and they get there for the sack. Daniil Hunter, who else? He's in there for his fourth sack of the afternoon. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Throwing on second and long. Allen. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. A big game there for the Bills. Our offense just continues to reign supreme. Big plays, both sides, back and forth. Tough to keep track of. It certainly is, and I'm over here just marveling at what I'm seeing. It's tough for you, though. You've got to call all these big plays and have all this emotion each time they go at each other. And a good gain here of nine from the 19 down to the 10. On second down, here's a run with Singletary. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. He went backwards there eight yards, and it brings up third down. From the gun, it's Allen. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. 
I want to go back to something you said in the first quarter about is it, winning. Is, is it a positive? It is a positive. Okay. Well, about winning the turnover battle as a visiting <laughs> team, as an underdog. You were right. They've done just that, and look where it's gotten them. It's part of the formula. When you go on the road, as you mentioned, being an underdog, winning the turnover battle is a big key, and this one's playing out in this one. Well, he was a spectator for much of this game. This is his first field goal opportunity of the entire contest, but he's able to connect. Yeah, he had a pretty good seat to this one, didn't he? But let's face it, all kickers that you and I know, they want to contribute. They want their opportunity, and he seized his. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Kirk Cousins and the Vikings offense back on the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know, that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Well, that should be a reminder defensively, and I think it's a reminder to myself because... You just can't sell out to stop the run. There's still enough time that this offense can move the football through the air, even on first and second downs, and they obviously picked the right spot to throw the ball there. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Osborne, and he'll be stopped right at midfield. They'll run on first down. It's Cook, and he's going to get this one down to the 45. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Again, it's Cook. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. 40 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. And I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Tackle made there by Matt Milano. The recipe is pretty simple, I think, right? Just give your superstar the ball, continue to feed him. Yeah, don't overthink this one, right? Make sure he's touching the football, but you're also counting on his intelligence and in playing the game as well. If it's not there, don't force the run. Just make sure you hang on to the football and keep the clock ticking. And he'll be close to a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 23. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. They'll try to get it on the ground with Madison. And he's going to have a first down here as he gets this one to the 17-yard line. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. From the red zone now, Cousins. And that one off the mark behind him, incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. Throwing again on second and ten. Cousins steps, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Jerry Hughes too strong as he's in for the sack. Enough takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And old Mo is a very, very fickle man. Third and long for Cousins. Going for it all. And look at this. They get the turnover they needed. It's intercepted. Picked off by Micah Hyde. And the Bills are right back in this football game. A critical error there in a tight game in the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, and especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter what point, you got to be super.
super careful. Got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. Throwing on first down is Allen. He'll get this out wide to Singletary. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Bills football here as we get you reset. They come up on a first and ten, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Flush to his right. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Allen. Four step and he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. set up the screen it's complete and he's got some space here and he will go out right near the 35 yard line a big game there for the bills well if you're a fan of offensive football this game is for you because this one's been much more like a tennis match than a football game back and forth back and forth and there's another example right there of another big play in the passing game and they run the option here on first and ten. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain there as he kept it himself at second down. Flushed out right. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. And down he goes, taking it inside the ten, just shy of the five at the six. And this is obviously a spot where you lean on your stars. Get the ball to them in open space. Let them do what they do. A looming decision to make on the conversion down seven. But first things first, they need to score as they come up on first and goal. They run here with Singletary. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the 10-yard line. Now the Bills will use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. Moved back to the 10. They'll try on second and goal here. Now Allen. Buying time to his left. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game. Third and goal, and keep in mind, very possibly four down territory. Throwing his Allen. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. What a great sequence by this defense so far. They've given him nowhere to go with a football. And they just have to make it stand up one more time because it appears that they've got their number can they not have a slip up here and allow the touchdown? Down seven, and they've got to go for it here on fourth down. Now Allen, got to have this one. Escaping the pressure right. And his ball is caught. It's a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, they're a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. Obviously, the excitement level here is almost a fever pitch. Down one is tempted to go for two. <laughs> I say you go ahead and kick the extra point. You got the home crowd carried into overtime. I'm with you. I do see some fans, though, holding up two fingers. Easy now. Yeah, but they're not the ones who have to actually make that call, are they? So now this will be, in all likelihood, to force overtime. And he has got it. So barring something crazy on the kickoff, we're looking at an extra period to decide this one. Set to go now with the kickoff. 
kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. One play has them up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. Now Cousins. That is caught by Thielen. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. And we've got free football. Four quarters done, and we're dead even. We'll have overtime after this timeout. And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and it gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. McKenzie now from his end zone and only able to get this to the 19 so probably should have opted for the touchback Buffalo set to get the football back here they control their own destiny here they have the football in overtime obviously a touchdown would win it and I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now, the ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. When you get a big tight end like this, sometimes it takes more than one man to bring him down. Oftentimes, your best bet, just jump on and hold on and wait for your teammates to arrive to help get him on the ground. A quick throw going to be caught by Diggs. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 at the 41. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Harrison Smith on the safety blitz, able to get the sack. Well, remember, he had the interception earlier. Now he adds the sack. He's really making his presence felt out there. Oh, he is putting together a heck of a game. In fact, he's going to bump these plays to his highlight reel, okay? So when he wants to show it off later on, look what I did out there, guys. And this offense, they've got to start paying him a little special attention. He's like a good basketball player, putting stats in every column. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm, incomplete. Now it's third down. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. On play action, Allen going deep for Diggs. It's intercepted. Mackenzie Alexander with a pick. And the Vikings are going to have it with a chance to win the game here in overtime. A costly mistake here at OT. And you know what they say when you throw an interception like that in overtime? You don't usually get a chance to throw a second one. I mean, I'm not sure the analytics on it. Let's ask Marvin, our statistician, to, to ring that down for us. That's typically how coaches and teams feel about it. If you throw one, you likely cost yourself the game. And he'll take it across midfield and into Buffalo territory. 57 yards rushing for him now as he is just trying to will his guys to an overtime victory. Second down, they go right back to Cook. And oh, he spins past him and into space. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 
Pretty explosive run on that inside handoff, and when you're a runner of his caliber, you don't need a big crease. You really don't, but also what we're seeing is an offensive line that's taking charge at the point of attack, aren't we? Not only are they controlling the initial contact, they're actually utilizing what they call the strain the next two to three seconds to continue to move people. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. Offensive line right now really freeing up the rushing lanes on this drive. And we have to give them props. They've earned them. But these big runs that we're seeing, they don't result without everyone else being involved as well. Blocking on the perimeter. Could strip the ball's out. Could have been a costly mistake, but as it turns out, they keep possession. You can't give away these types of opportunities in the red zone. And I'm sure that was flashing through his brain as the ball escaped his hands. Fortunately for him, able to get picked up by his team, fumble recovered. They still have an opportunity deep in the red zone. Big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. Another tote for the workhorse this afternoon. It's Cook. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. As the fans exit back out through the turnstiles, not happy looks on their faces. Feel like they probably let this one slip away at home in overtime. I would agree with that and, and their unhappiness. Hurts the guys at the concession stands on the way out, right? <laughs> Not stopping to buy something for the kids. They just want to get home. But what a dramatic way to finish this bad boy off. I mean, this game was dramatic all the way through. That's why we got to overtime. And then to go ahead and finish it this way, the fans streaming out unhappy. But the team that came in here and won this one on the road, they sprinted to their locker room. And speaking of buying things, dinner on you tonight, Davis. I kind of figured that was coming. Well, Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone.